Well, the, the biggest thing about MRI, like I said before, is that it does use a large magnet to image with. Um, and that's important because when the patient, when the body is subject to a large magnetic field, um, the molecules and the atoms uh, in the body act a very predictable way. But what they end up doing is ultimately they generate a signal that we can tune into and listen to. Um, that signal or those signal properties is pretty constant um, among all patients and among all body parts. I mean, but we know that there's a specific types of interactions that the magnetic field is going to create in a patient's body, and we know what those are. Now, say maybe you've injured your knee or something, you've bumped your knee, you've got a popped ligament, or you've got a lot of swelling in your knee and a lot of pain, and they need to investigate where that's coming from. Well, with MRI, um, when we are acquiring the images, we know that normal I mean, any kind of normal bone or normal tissue will generate a certain type of signal for us. Well, the interesting thing about MRI is that um, diseased or pathologic fluid or pathologic bone or tissue actually generates a different signal that we can tune into and listen to. Um, the best, probably simplified analogy that I can give for that is think about your car radio. If you're going down the road, uh, you know you've got a specific signal or specific frequency that you turn into to maybe listen to country radio. Like say for um, if you're listening to 92.5, that's a specific dialed in signal that you're going to to listen to and you know that it, you should get country music out of it. Well in my area it's the same thing. I know that normal bone and normal tissue will generate a certain signal that I can tune into and listen to. Um, and, and that's what we, we try to do, but uh, if you've got a fracture or you've got soft tissue that has a tumor in it or you've got some sort of inflammation process or a popped ligament or you know, a busted cartilage in your knee or something like that, that generates different signal properties. So if you tune in to 92.5 and you're expecting to listen to the country and you get heavy metal, well you know that's different. That's not what I was supposed to get. And that's what we, that's how we identify pathology is that we know that there's a specific range of signals and properties that we're supposed to get. Um, but if we get something back different, like if uh, pretty much with any sort of disease or pathology, the increase or the change in signal comes because um, there's an increase of fluid of some sort. So, you know, if you've got an injury of some sort, the most common thing that happens is you see swelling or you see redness or you see an increase of fluid in that area. And that's what generates a different signal for us to tune into and listen to. A lot of people want to know what the MRI stands for. The MRI stands for, or the M stands for magnetic, and that's because we use a large magnetic field. Um, the resonance comes from, uh, the best way I can describe resonance to people is if you take a tuning fork that's tuned to a specific frequency and you strike it it's going to make a little humming sound at that frequency well if you take another tuning fork at the same that's the same exact tuning fork same exact frequency and you bring them close together well the one that you struck will make the one that you didn't strike start vibrating and generating that's resonance that's a transfer of energy from one one entity to another entity and that's what we do is the body generates that signal and we give the body some additional signal we exchange we have a um, I guess the best way to describe it is we have a energy exchange between the patient and um, when that happens uh, we listen for the results that come back from the patient's pathology and we you know, we have a whole room full of computers that breaks down that signal and and analyzes it and differentiates the normal signal from the abnormal signal and generates our images for us, kind of like the car radio did. You know, you tune in to country, your, that signal that you're getting from the radio waves is floating in the air, your car radio receiver will break it down and give you the music from. And that's what the, uh, the MRI uh, computers do is they break down that signal and they listen for normal signal and then they pick up on abnormal signal and, and, and it's very easily discernible. Any body part that we image, any, any specific body part, if I'm imaging your shoulder or your knee or your abdomen or your brain, we have a very special antenna that we have to use. Uh, we call them imaging coils or imaging, a lot of people hear them as imaging cameras. Um, but uh, those are basically the antennas that pick up and draw in that signal. So they're basically, if I'm imaging your knee and I've got a, a large plastic apparatus wrapped around your knee, that's basically just a glorified antenna that is picking in, picking up and drawing in that signal for us. Um, kind of like your car radio does. I mean, you you got to have a receiver, you got to have a signal, but you also have to have the antenna to pull in the signal and be able to, to listen to it with. And that's what uh, some of these cameras are.